You have to think about what business you're trying to run, right? Exactly. What's the so end? like you know some people don't want to scale up and have a huge team and have all these employees. Yeah, that's, and that's okay. Yes. But also, you know yeah. that you're going to be wearing a lot of hats then. So mm. how do you how do you automate things mm. around you to where you can still fill your calendar and you're not on this yo-yo of business? Because that's what ends up happening to a lot of agents is. You know they're lead generating they get some deals in the pipeline then they got to focus mm. on doing the deals they're not lead generating and then they got to focus on closing them and and so you're wearing a lot of hats as a single agent automating some of these things so you're not missing opportunities with the lead exactly. gen on the front yes. end then you continue to fill your calendar with potential mm -hmm. you know buyers or sellers that's how you have to think about using some of these tools it's not a replacement it's exactly to make yeah. things more efficient for you so you can live the life that you want to live Scott, so good to see you and so good to have you here. Thank you so much. I know you are a busy guy and I really appreciate your time and I'm pretty sure our, our audience will appreciate the information they'll get today. But before we dive into the topic, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into helping real estate teams with technologies What's your story, actually? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th thank you so much for having me. And, um, you know, I look forward to sharing everything and anything I can to, to help uh, the real estate agents or teams that are listening to you. So um, my background, I, I actually, right out of college, I got into uh, real estate and I became a certified home appraiser. So that was Ooh. my first kind of step into into the real estate space and working in real estate. And, you know, I put a, you know, to be certified, I have to put like 3000 hours in the field. So it was, I did that for about four years and then the market crashed. So I went through the market crash in 08 in Phoenix and um, kind of, you know, at that time I was very young. So I wanted to kind of figure out, you know, what direction I was going to go. I went and got a lot of sales experience uh, doing B2B sales. And then full circle in 2012, I started working again with real estate teams and agents uh, through another company called Viral Marketing. And I was one of the executives over there. I helped build that company. I worked there for about seven years and just, yeah. I mean, thousands and thousands of conversations, events. I mean, you name it. I was traveling everywhere and, and, and working with that company. And then that led me to running RealSync. And I became one of the, the founder partners of RealSync. Uh, with a, mm. another business partner of mine. And we we started this company due to the lack of integrations and automations within the real estate space. Real estate tends to always be technologically a little mm -hmm. bit behind other industries. Yeah. And so we thought there was a real opportunity to build a, build a middleware company like RealSync. And from there, we've expanded and added and we can go into that a little bit later but that's kind of you know that started we started working and building the platform in around 2017 and then we launched it in 2020 right before covid is a great time mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that um, is, yeah, yeah that's that's the story so ever amazing. since we've been helping real estate agents and teams just um you know implement execute automation in their businesses and, and integration in their businesses so that they can you know yeah do what they do best, which is best. Working. I know. Yeah, working with uh, the the you know the buyers and sellers, right? I know, and uh, the world is moving; it's always changing, and um, if we don't change, our competition will change. So I always encourage my clients because they are always not always. Sometimes objecting, say, "Yeah, but this is what I was always doing. The business. This is my style." I say, "Like you know, I respect your style." but you will have competition. Competition is doing something else. So I would definitely look into, into that. So, so yeah. you, you, you help real estate teams and real estate agents get the most out of technology they already have. This is my understanding. Can you please elaborate on common pain points for real estate teams? Yeah. So <laughs> I, yeah, there's, there's a lot, right? Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start with, some of the things that we're like where we're constantly helping, which is a mm. good gauge of what some of the problems are, right? Are there's a lot of whether you're an independent agent or a very small team or even a large team, a lot of times there's 
a block between generating the lead and getting that lead into the CRM and having some automation set up to drip on them, whether it's a you know buyer or seller campaign, something of value giving information. So that step, just from generating the lead, a lot mm -hmm. of times agents are still like copying and pasting and manually entering the data because it ends up in the inbox and they mm -hmm. haven't figured out how to automate that. So that's the thing that we're helping a lot of agents all the time. So it starts there. It's like, let's get all of your leads. It's called a mail parser. We set up those par parses all the time for, um, for the agents to where it basically scrapes that email of mm. all the, you know, all the buyer data, let's say. Um, and it puts it into the CRM and creates that, that lead automatically. And then it's, you very easily can set up an automation from there. So that's mm -hmm. one of the big things that we work on. I mean, all okay. the time. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, this is, uh, probably the, the most, uh, hottest pain point for real estate, uh, getting leads. Mm -hmm. And there are so many ways to get leads. And then people are like, they don't know what to do with the leads. They, they get in the leads eventually, but then they're not doing anything. They're not doing like a, like a proper follow-up. Um, I spoke the other day with one of my clients and she, she was a little bit like, uh, hesitating because I proposed her, why don't we do, um, we do like an event with a, mm. a past clients, client recognition. She was a little Great bit idea. hesitating and she said, why, why people would come? What? Like she was asking those questions and I said, well, you have to keep your people, your, your past clients very close to you because you can't out of the blue then just follow up after like three years or two years. You have to keep, keep it very, 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 keep them very, very close to you. So you got to build a fence. Uh, uh, it's, it's like a relationship, honestly. When oh, you're yeah. like a friend with somebody, and if if you if you want to connect with that person, it's a different way you connect. If you are actually connect talking to that person like weekly or every two weeks versus like every three years, yeah. it's a different approach. It's a different relationship. So it's kind of the same with with the clients. I I would say, and I think this is great. You 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 are actually help them because this is like very fast. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know it's very. How, it's very important what you're talking about, right? So yeah, it's like when you're in a relationship with anyone, whether it's mm -hmm. a best friend or a significant other. Yes. You can't just withdraw. You got to put know. in deposits, lots of deposits. Absolutely. And that's what staying in yeah. touch is, right? Lots of value, value, value. Mm. Do a free workshop. Do a, a social event. Send videos to add value so that Absolutely, when you yeah. do follow up and ask them for maybe a referral or if they mm. need help with real estate, they're much more willing to engage that conversation yeah. because you've been adding value, right? So it, that, it comes, that's something that's key, you know? Yeah, it comes more natural than, you know, just following up, like out of the blue. It's it, it's like a, like a natural conversation. So Absolutely, because here's the thing. Yeah, people don't, yeah. you know, agents don't want to make phone calls. Well, it, that's, uh, you know what? Phone calls. Yeah. So you have to have a really good reason to want to call yeah. someone. If you don't have a good reason, yeah. it's going to make it yeah. impossible to call. You got to have a good reason to call and, fall yeah. and stay in touch, right? Yeah. They are getting cold feet uh, for like call calling or even like calling a past client because, as you said, why should I call now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so don't repeat yeah. the same mistake. <laughs> no. So, and this goes back to, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to turn this into technology, right? So if you're generating a lot of cold leads mm -hmm. and you don't really have time to follow up or you don't really want to call mm -hmm. them, there are solutions now where yeah. it's an AI bot making the phone call for you, right? So I know. It's, it's wild, but they're very good. Actually, yeah. one of the companies that we partner with got some feedback from them and they said that when they tested it on their internal staff, mm like their internal sales team, the, the AI outperformed their sales team. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it, that's a, probably a good topic to have uh, the way you, we use AI because it's a tool, it's not a replacement, right? That's, Absolutely, that's, it's a tool. It's, it's, it's a tool. So as any tool, you have to learn and use it properly, not just abusing maybe or no, uh, no, just no. copy yeah. and paste or uh, there are things and more and more people know oh that's 100 this is an ai tax or that's one so it's okay to use it but 
the way you use it it's it's so important to, to Absolutely. know uh, Absolutely. the dosage and uh you you need to put a little bit more effort if you ask me so like in any you know work you do well you have to think about what business you're trying to run right exactly what's the so end? like you know some people don't want to scale up and have a huge team and have all these employees yeah, that's, and that's okay true. Yes. But also, you know yeah. that you're going to be wearing a lot of hats then. So mm. how do you how do you automate things mm. around you to where you can still fill your calendar and you're not on this yo-yo of business? Because that's what ends up happening to a lot of agents is, you know, they're lead generating, they get some deals in the pipeline, then they got to focus mm. on doing the deals. They're not lead generating, and then they got to focus on closing them. And, and so you're wearing a lot of hats as a single agent, automating some of these things so you're not missing opportunities with the lead exactly. gen on the front yes. end and you continue to fill your calendar with potential mm -hmm. you know buyers or sellers that's how you have to think about using some of these tools it's not a replacement it's exactly to make yeah. things more efficient for you so you can live the life that you want to live you know absolutely not burn out so yeah. how much how much of the pain points do you believe stems from a uh, like lack of knowledge about the existing tools versus a true need for additional technology because people they already have some platform they're using so should we look for new platforms can you use the platforms we have yeah, where we are it's a great question <laughs> it's a great question because I, I wish there was a simple answer. I think I feel like it's a mix of things a lot of times. I'm right? sorry. So, it's just no, uh, no. yeah. <laughs> no. So you have to always start with what you're using, mm. right? And a lot of times you're right. Like, you know, you're not maximizing the solutions mm. you have. And then you see these shiny new things and you go, well, oh, that's going to fix my problems. I should go do mm. that one. And that's not really the, the best approach. I think the mm -hmm. best approach is look at the tech you're using. Mm -hmm. If you can't have, if you can't figure out the the put aside time to actually learn it and maximize it, you need to spend a little money to have someone else do it. Even if it's a, a virtual assistant, give them ownership, you know. Or uh, if you have an operations person, or if you can hire a third party to come in and do the setup for you, that way you can identify and maximize the tools that you have, right? Once you're doing that, then you're going to gain visibility on whether or not that tool is working well for you or not. Mm -hmm. There's no way to know if you don't use the tool. Exactly. Right? Not just jumping right away on yeah. the new platform. So you, so you yeah. have to look at, all right, am mm -hmm. I using all the automations with these tools? Do I have them? Do I have the two or three different systems I'm using connected to each other? Is there seamless data flow? Am I mm -hmm. eliminating? double data entry where I can, right? And if your answer is to yes to all that, then you can step back and go, all right, is this actually helping my business? Are these tools helping my business? Am I missing pieces that I want to add in? Mm -hmm. Or do I actually have to move to a whole different, maybe CRM or different system that's going to yeah. better suit my business, right? So yeah. a lot of times I, I, when I talk to teams, I go, you know what? You, you need to step back and think about the processes that mm. you have, what you want to happen from the time you generate a lead to the time you're putting them on like a nurture campaign for a decade, mm -hmm. right <laughs> after they close with you, what's mm -hmm. that process all the way through? What do you want it to be? And yeah. then you go find the tech tools to input in between to, to do the automation for you. Right. Exactly. So you have to have a really good, you have to sit back and really like be the business owner for a minute. Think yeah. about how Absolutely. to work on your business, not just in it. Right. Because you get so stuck in it, doing the, the calls, yeah. the follow up, the messaging, the communication. Yeah. You have to set aside some time to think about what's, what's your business look like during that process. I know I spend a lot of time with my clients on clarity, because if you have clarity it's it's different because mm -hmm. then you know what to do. Right? right. It's like when you start cooking, uh, if you know exactly what do you want to cook, you know, exactly the ingredients, but if you don't know exactly what you want to cook, you're like, Oh, I don't know what I have to buy from the grocery store. So it, it, it is the same. You're like, uh, yeah, you got to read the recipe much. first before you go to the grocery store. You have to decide. You have to decide what actually. You have to decide what type of you know if you have an event, if it's just 
whatever but clarity it's it's important if you ask me and like you mentioned before um if, if they want to have a, a full team if they are just solopreneurs they're work like in by themselves um what their uh, skills level on you know technology that's uh, also important i always encourage them have a va a virtual assistant these days honestly it's so easy to have somebody to help you and you don't have to hire like a full-time person it's just a couple of times but it makes huge difference huge difference and a absolutely uh, I, I i agree with you i think yeah. um you have to remember you know the the whole virtual assistant overseas mm. that started to happen you know almost a decade ago where it got very and popular and now all of these employees yeah. Oh, yeah. there have so much experience working with real estate teams. I know. It's just, it, yeah, yeah. oh man, the leverage yeah. you can get. I mean, some of my best team members on my personal team are in the Philippines and they're mm -hmm. unbelievable. They're unbelievable. Absolutely. And, um, you know, so don't be afraid to go that route, right? Especially yeah, yeah. if you know what position or what skills, mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. act, you know, things you're looking to fill, right? Exactly. No, 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 for sure. So I wanted to talk to you about integration. Can you please walk us through an example of how disconnected tech systems, for example, can negatively impact the real estate business? So we have so many, I don't know, platforms to use, but they're disconnected. Yeah. So integration is key when, when, when you start adding systems, okay? So it, it all starts with one system which is your crm mm -hmm. so that should be the source in the source of truth for your data right then as you add systems you really need to make sure like is this does this system have an open api do they connect the zapier right mm -hmm. zapier is a really uh, a really great tool i know um, like we use then, it. yeah right and we use it too yes. for our clients so we do a lot of yeah. services as well where we'll set up zaps for our clients mm -hmm. because they don't have the time or tools yeah. to do it themselves right mm -hmm. and then you know our company real sync is like a zapier for real estate we're mm -hmm. a proprietary integration platform that has certain integrations that are yeah. kind of you know click 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 and you can set them up right mm -hmm. so one example would be there's a company called fellow that's gotten very popular over the last year does a lot of timely marketing uh, of your database to get people re-engaged and opting in raising their hand. Uh, so I think you have a video on your on your YouTube podcast, right? I do. You have a video yeah. about them. So yeah, I watched it last night actually and it's very interesting. Yeah. So I, so I did my homework. Sorry. I know it's amazing. <laughs> I don't want to I see like, like but yeah. I, I always like to do my homework before I, I, I talk to someone. <laughs> no, it's this great. Field. So, oh, this is a like scary field sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And the reason I bring them up is they're one of our most popular integrations. Mm -hmm. And it's a bi-directional integration from fellow system to the CRM. So mm -hmm. when the leads generated, it basically recreates the lead, changes the, the status of the lead in your CRM, adds some notes, adds some mm -hmm. tags, mm -hmm. adds a follow-up task, gives you a lot of information on what homes they're looking at, all that comes from fellow system back into the CRM. So yeah. again, you're working in one place, right? And that's yeah. the key with integrations is that the whole point is, you know, especially if you have other team members, yes. is you don't want them logging into three or four different systems. You want exactly. them to be in one system. It's mm. hard enough to get them into one system, updating Absolutely. it with with notes and tasks and things like that right no kidding yeah i did yeah. that before i so, know i was i was there so i know exactly what are you talking about yeah so that's the value of integration it gives you mm -hmm. you know it puts you in one place gives you visibility of what's mm -hmm. happening in some of your other systems because it's all in one place so that you can be more effective and efficient especially with lead follow-up which is where the money is right so uh -huh. the more data you have coming in giving you insight into the leads you should be following up with is where there's a huge benefit for integration, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's complex, but once you you know your stuff, oh my goodness, it's it's, yeah. it's like when you 
back in the day when uh, and i still are hearing from people like they don't use the uh, the dishwasher i said i'm still like doing my dish, dish I, I, I wash the dishes with my hand it's too complicated for me it's probably the same but once you discover the power and how much time you save and then you're you can use your time for for something else for your family because that's probably um, and I was talking actually the other day with with a real estate person and uh, we and he, he agreed with me it's a it's a lifestyle being a real estate agent it's a honestly it's a lifestyle because you have to be available for your clients hmm. weekends um, I don't know holidays you you can't just you know close the shop and go on vacation. <laughs> I mean, you can, of course, but uh, then you discover maybe your past clients or potential clients they use somebody else instead of you, so you don't want you don't want that. So it's it's more like a lifestyle, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The more you can be like not not getting bogged down by systems mm -hmm. because you added some integration and automation, the more mm -hmm. you can focus on the relationships, right? And not mm -hmm. miss those opportunities. And that's really the value of automation integration. Mm -hmm. It's to give you back your time to focus on what's most important, right? Exactly. And yeah. also not on, only, I mean, family is everything. It's not the most important, it's everything. But also because real estate agents, they are like salespeople and they should focus on what they know best, and which is pick up the phone, call your client, or you know, engage with your prospects because that's pretty much what they're supposed to do. Not admin stuff, not database, not you know, uh, this type of, of work. And uh, yeah, this is why I'm doing a lot of materials like today uh, interview because I want people to see more and more how they can improve their. Um, I mean, even as a client, I would appreciate if I would deal with a real estate agent who is up to date with the technology, to be honest, I would trust mm -hmm. more that person than I would trust somebody who's probably maybe equal good, but doing pen and paper, you know, the old way of follow-up. I mean, it's still, I still appreciate, of course, it's an effort, but I would trust more a person who is more curious and wants to be up to date with the technology. Yeah. That's, that's, that's me. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's well, me. you know, you, you step back and mm -hmm. you can only remember so much in your brain. That's the Absolutely. reality, right? So yeah. the, the CRM specifically, uh, you know, having one, if you don't have one, you should go get one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, think about like, if you, if you have someone that you're supposed to follow up with in five months, mm -hmm. like no matter what you say to me right now, there's no way you're remembering the last conversation you had with that oh, person. Oh, no, 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 no. Because you're having too many, right? Yeah. So it gives you a baseline if you have notes in there mm. about that person, about what the last conversation was, or a record of the email or the text in that contact. Yeah. And you have you've set a task. You have a reminder to follow exactly. up. You're not going to forget. Yes. The mm. value of just that is worth every dollar for having a CRM. Absolutely. Let alone I, all the other things it can probably do, right? I know. I also recommend make um, an extra uh, column and put the feeling. I mean, was a resistant client, was a client to deal mm -hmm. very like easily, you know. Um, I, I always encourage put an extra information. It's it's so good because then you That's can great. go back. Yeah, you can go back and uh, pick the conversation where you left off, or uh, you show that you re you remember the way you guys. If you don't remember, it was like a it was a nice guy, or it was like a. Mm, so what? The, how I should have, you you know what I mean? Can you imagine That's not huge. being prepared? You, not yeah, being yeah. Prepared like hey, for, last time. For, yeah, yeah, last like, time we spoke, am I a friend or am I an enemy? Started. You know, yeah, yeah. am I a friend or am I an enemy? So it's good, it's good to know before you even like absolutely because you could be more genuine then. You know, when or you approach somebody a conversation. Else. Yeah. Yes, or somebody else because that actually helps very much with your team because you have the conversation with the prospect. You know if you remember how the conversation went, and then. If somebody else is doing the follow up, that person needs to be up to speed. Oh, I have to be a little bit more cautious with this client or this prospect yeah. because I don't know. So I think it's, it's very important. I, I mean, I'm not even debating. Honestly, people is like 
back in the day, like I can remember 15 years ago, people like, should I have a LinkedIn profile? Like, no, it's when, <laughs> it's not should. It's like, you know no, what I mean? It's, is, it's, should yeah. you build it out yourself or hire someone to do it for you? Which it's, is what it, I did. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Paid two, yeah. Like 300 bucks and someone just built it for me. Uh, and now I, it's I, easy to maintain, right? It is. It's so easy. It's crazy easy, honestly. Yeah. So in your experience, what's the relationship between streamlined technology and real estate agent or maybe the, his or her team ability to provide an exceptional client service? It, it's kind of connected with what I said. If, if you know your last or, uh, you know, a little bit more about the person, right? Yeah. I mean, from a consumer standpoint, right? Like once you get into where you're doing business with this person mm. thing, like the communication is the key that needs to be automated, right? Mm. So you can't just be like flying by the seat of your pants and just sending random texts to your client. <laughs> I mean, you could, I wouldn't recommend it. Right. So I think, um, I think having, you know, a very clear understanding of what communication happens and when to the client. And then, you know, that results in your CRM, or if you have a transaction or task management type solution, mm -hmm that all of that is automated when they get to a certain stage, which is like signed or pending, right? All of a sudden you have all this automation mm -hmm. happening where here's all the tasks that need to be completed in order to get this person to, across the finish line, right? Yeah. Uh, to, to where you're at their house, you know, giving them a closing gift. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think having that behind the scenes automated, whether it's you as a business owner doing it, or you have a transaction management, uh, you know, a TC doing it, transaction coordinator, or, you know, you, you hire part of it out, like that process needs to be very automated, right? Because mm -hmm. like, if you've, if any of you have been through a buying experience, which most probably have, you yeah. understand the storm of emails that happen from title and your mortgage and it's just, it's chaos, right? So the more efficient you can be as the Absolutely, realtor, yeah. since you're like the linchpin of the transaction. Mm. I think that's re really important. So having all those steps in that process automated, mm -hmm. you, see, you know exactly what tasks are being completed each day, who you're yeah. having to contact each day, when mm -hmm. you have to contact the client. I think that's really, really, really uh, important and can make things effective, right? And having yeah. integration with those different systems, like from your CRM to maybe Dot Loop or SkySoap or DocuSign with all the forms and stuff, mm -hmm. like you can automate some of that, you mm -hmm. know, in those some of those forms going out at the right time. Yeah that can be extremely uh, helpful as well, right? Yeah, so just, well for sure. yeah, that, those are some of my recommendations to streamline things, you know? I know. Uh, we talked, you talked a little bit about um, the task you would recommend, but can you go back and if you can give us some simple example of automation tasks for if people, because people can get confused, right? As I said, not everybody's skilled or, um, very skilled uh, with technology and even when we are what we what we talked right now today it's can be confusing for for some of the people right so if you can give yeah. us some task you would um um well it depends, like like at what point, right because there's so many different tasks that you can automate so one of the things like i recommend okay when specific around you know, building your database and building in follow-up, which is, mm -hmm. you know, which is the key to conversion, right? So um, using tags mm -hmm. is very, very important, right? In, okay. the, in, in the CRM, okay? And then tags can trigger email automation, okay? okay so that's great. Yeah, so I would say, you know, every time you add someone or communicate with someone in your database, you want to mm -hmm. think about, how do like how do I group them? Where mm -hmm. do they like what list would I put them on? If I were mm -hmm. to like say like there's four or five things that contribute to this specific list, do they fit into that? Mm -hmm. And the reason you want to start breaking it down to different list types is because then you can get much more specific with your message to the market, right? And and that's the key is you know when yeah. you when you think about converting people or follow up you need to make sure that you're sending the right message to the right people, yeah. right? Oh. And so the more specific you can get yeah. with mm -hmm. what category they fit into, you know, whether it's like my sphere, past client, uh, you know, I met them at this event, right? Or they mm -hmm. like this certain thing that I like, 
And that's, I, and I know that, and then I can define that. It's going to make it a lot easier for when you follow up, or if you mm -hmm. send them some automation campaigns mm -hmm. that are more specific to, you know, what they're, what type of content they want to receive. So I would say, make sure that your tags are accurate or build mm -hmm. a smart list. Some of these CRMs have smart lists that you can label okay. like this, this type of list mm -hmm. can be based on timelines as well. There's so many different ways you can slice it, right? Like yeah. it, maybe this person's, uh, you know, three to six months out or mm -hmm. six to 12, right? And so there's a certain type of campaign they get that's more of a yeah. long-term, not as, mm -hmm. you know, pressured, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's some of the automation that you can okay. think about and the tasks and, and using tags appropriately in your CRM, right? Okay. Sounds, yeah. sounds good. You mentioned yeah. KPI, the key performance indicator um, a minute ago. So yeah. what are some important numbers that real estate teams should track to help them make probably smarter decision, I would say? And if you think about like numbers that a lot of people might not necessarily think about, if I know well, I didn't, so yeah, just no, people no. to know, I, we didn't even prepare the questions. So you're like, it's no, interesting. No, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a great question. So, mm. uh, I mean, when you, if, if it's just you, like, you know, if you're doing a good mm. job, right? Like, you know, if you're setting appointments, mm. if you're making enough calls and you're making mm. enough contacts, yeah, right? But starting to track that stuff is very important, especially mm. if you have team members, right? If you have agents that work for you, you need to know, like, I, I would say dials, emails, texts, which all lead to contacts. How mm. many people are you connecting with or mm. contacting every single day, right? Because yes. Each no leads to, it gets you closer to the yes, right? We all know that. Mm -hmm. So you, but you need to be talking to people to get closer to that yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that, those are key performance indicators I'm looking at. I'm also looking at talk time. If you're making a bunch of calls and connecting with people and That's you're like on the phone for 30 time. seconds, I think talk time is so important. And then, you it know, is. that's all of the reach out type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like the front facing, like you need to be doing this for a certain amount of hours a day or, you know, and then tracking it, right? So yes, that you can give feedback or know mm -hmm. what's happening. And then the next set of KPIs is like appointment set, appointment mm -hmm. met, sign pending close, right? How many deals mm -hmm. are you getting in the pipeline? What's yeah. your conversion rate from the That's set actually one to of the met, big one. Yeah. And then met the signed. And then yeah. you have to know that, right? You have to know that mm -hmm. for your agents too, because if your rate and and again, this is data you can collect for your your team over time, or you can mm -hmm. work off of yeah. averages based on, you know, successful teams. I'm sure you can mm -hmm. find that data somewhere and understanding like, you know, the, the conversion ratio from set to met should be around this number. If this yeah. agent is lower than that, then something's mm -hmm. happening with the appointments they're setting aren't really good qual qualified appointments because they're not yeah. getting the met or people are canceling or no showing yeah. or from met the signed you know, something's going on where they're, to, they're just not skilled enough when they're at the appointment to convert it. So what's happening exactly, there, yeah. we have to train them up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then, and then it goes back to, all right, well, if I know I have to train them and then you start training them and they don't approve that, you know, it's not a skill thing necessarily. It could be a behavior mm -hmm. thing. Right. Yeah. And then, so you always want to be breaking down looking at your employees skills, behavior, and motivation are the yeah. three. It's the triangle, yeah. right? Behavior is the hardest one to, to teach, as mm. you know. Trying Almost to get impossible, to, I would I would yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. I would dare it, to say it it's really is. Impossible. Either you have the behaviors, or you don't. Sometimes Absolutely, you can adjust yeah. them a little bit. Yeah. Motivation, you know, mm. you can you can help facilitate motivation, you know, by, by being a good leader. Yeah. Skills, you can train skills to an extent if they're motivated. Um, but those are the things you're always looking at. So like that, that's um, kind of the next layer is like the appointments and, and signed and yeah. everything else. Um, yeah. And then, you know, at the end of the day, if they're being successful there, you're going to see that convert into in, in, in numbers. You know, commissions, we'll see the numbers. numbers. Yeah. So those yeah. are the KPIs and the, the data analytics that I'll, mm. I'd be looking at as a team owner, um, you know, specifically. Right. Even and, as an in, and individual. Then, yeah. Like, art. Is this person's deals always taking longer to close? Mm. That means that they're, you know, something's not happening correctly yeah. during the paperwork process or like they're mm -hmm. just not communicating well. Also, yeah. are their commissions like are they making enough money for the company? Mm -hmm. Are they always mm -hmm. given a discount, maybe? 
right? That's why they're getting more deals. That's another thing. Yeah. That's another thing yeah. to look at. What is it yeah. actually doing for mm. this? Is this agent actually profitable for your business? Right? Yeah. I mean, you can do so many transactions, but how many, how much, how much money do you do you make? That's, right. that's right. Right. And so those yeah. are a lot of different yeah. things that I'd be looking at through the whole process, you know? Yeah. I like the triangle you mentioned. And I also, I'm thinking, um, do you know, uh, Wiltman, um, he always said, put the person in the right seat because everybody has a seat, seat uh, um, skill sets, but you have to make sure you put the, that person in the right seat. So you have to, but that's a, a way, right? When you, you had the KPI yeah. and you, you go back with the numbers and you know, like I said, it takes a bit longer or not actually happening, the, the, the conversion. You, you have to see the bottleneck, actually see what's going on and investigate and take some measures. Uh, based on information you you get. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're hiring anyone too, like you should be doing some sort of assessment with them yeah. to identify mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. where where they should fit or if they're mm -hmm. the right person for the role that you're hiring for, right? Because it, it, if you're just yeah. interviewing them, it's like the iceberg effect, right? They're only showing mm -hmm. you the 20% above the water, uh, not the 80% yeah. below, right? So, yeah. you know, I it know. does have a high eye if there would be a buyer's agent, right? Yeah. On the disc assessment. You know, mm. they should, they should be very personable and extroverted and outgoing and want to talk to people. I mean, that's mm. an ideal fit for, for a buyer's agent where a, a listing agent maybe has a little bit more D a little bit more drive, mm -hmm. a little bit more mm -hmm. hardcore, like, I'm getting yeah. a little bit more sales. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. you know, those are things that you should be looking for. It's in a agency. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked in the beginning a little bit about the uh, real estate market changing. It's actually constantly changing. So mm -hmm. if you can um, give us some example or if you can uh, tell us about the trends and where we should pay attention, what kind of the trend, trends we should pay attention to like, and what's what's important in that, that trend maybe? Yeah, I mean, the big thing that you've been seeing, at least on the technology front, mm. is, um, you know, a AI type solutions, right? Yes. So it's like, it's it's everywhere. <laughs> and, it's, and the reality yeah. is, is that like people are just building their AI solution on top of like mm. chat GBT, mm -hmm. right? So chat, chat GBT has a ton of integration, so you can integrate it into your platform, right? Mm -hmm. and, and use its, the, the technologies that, that's been built in yours, right? So... I think, you know, what you need to pay attention to is, um, I mean, I, I, I'd say more like things that you should be starting to look to execute in your business mm. is, uh, you know, specifically automated texts. Okay. So like a texting solution, whether it's built into your CRM or you add, there's tons of texting yeah. solutions that have integration. I, I, I um, can see actually more and more, I'm, I'm receiving more and more like texts and uh, WhatsApp messages as well. Yeah, like you can't like ignore you're, it you're when you're on your phone, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's. I mean, we have our phone. I don't have my phone when I'm like working. I don't have yeah. my phone right now. Uh, but yeah, most of most of the people they have their phone with them. They feel like they don't have a leg or a hand if they don't have their phone. Yeah. So you you wanna use this advantage. Yeah. So I think, and then I think now more mm -hmm. than ever, you need to be building relationships. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? You really need to be doing video and sending video yeah. texts and yes. um, yeah. personal, personal things like that, doing mm. more events and being social, mm -hmm. being out there and being in front of your, your sphere, right. And engaging them as much as you can, because at the end of yeah. the day, the, these big tech companies like Zillow and all these big companies are going to keep trying to pinch the commission down. Mm -hmm. And the more they do that, the more important it is that you have relationships with your really tight knit group of, of people that are going to use you because of trust mm. and, and choose you over, you know, using the Zillow or Redfin or the other, or the yeah. random agents that are doing it for a flat fee mm. or whatever it is. Right. And they're going to choose to, to spend the money with you mm -hmm. because they trust you. And that, that's, exactly. that's so important. Right. So, uh, and this again, circling back is like mm -hmm. the communication tool of texting. If you can't keep up the calls, there's some really cool voice automation solutions oh, yeah. where like you literally Love it. can't I tell, know. you can't tell oh, that yeah. you're talking to a bot. It's amazing. I know. I know. Yeah. I, I, I love, I have the voice over IP. 
um, and it's so interesting because I'm I'm traveling a lot, right? So I'm going to Europe because I'm from Europe. I, I go, I have no vacation, and I can check my I I can receive phone calls or I can check my my voicemail because yeah. everything is on. You know, I don't even actually I don't even have a, a home phone anymore. Nobody has it, so it's yeah. it's 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 interesting. And then um, other marketing the, like marketing activities you can automate. Mm, so oh yeah, posting and oh, obviously yeah. all your newsletters and emails. A lot of that yeah. stuff can be automated, right? So this is a great topic, actually. So I'm not so yep. sure if you are willing to come back to to my podcast. I would I would love to, to be honest. Um, sure. I don't know in a. Uh, but before um, we will end our conversation, uh, I have to question where people can find you. Mm -hmm. And also if you provide any trainings. So if let's say, or maybe another question is um, a little bit more about the the, the product. So if so yeah. let's say somebody watches this, these materials and say, I'm, I'm very interested. I wanted to talk to Scott, where I can find Scott. And I, I want to know a little bit more about the products. So if yeah. you can... Provide Absolutely. some information would be amazing. So you can see the, you know, realsync.com is the, is the, uh, yes. our website, yes. right? Sc mm -hmm. Just email me, scott at realsync.com. Mm -hmm. Email me any questions, reach out. If you want to get in the call, send you a calendar link, we'll book a call mm -hmm. um, if, if you want to talk. So uh, a little bit about like our offer, right, is we have our integration platform, which you can just come in a lot. Like one, some of the more popular integrations are like, we have a Google contacts integration to your CRM. So your phone, basically you add someone to your phone and it shoots in your mm -hmm. CRM. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, so we have the integrations that we also have services. Okay. And so mm -hmm. what services is, is basically you, you come to us and you say, you know what, I need help with this, that, and the other. And we just do a billable hour thing and, and set it up for you. So you don't have to worry about it. And then we mm -hmm. also will handle and manage anything we set up for you, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it. And okay. it's just taken care of for you. Right. So they have okay. that aspect. And then, um, it's good. Recording. So whenever this comes out, we're releasing a brand new app that we've been working on mm -hmm. for 10 months. Okay. 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 Great. And so probably if you're seeing this right now, um, it's either live or we have, uh, we're in our beta period where it's a waiting list. Either way, go to our website. You'll see it. You'll see it on there where you can sign up mm -hmm. for the waiting list or you can sign up for the new application it's a business intelligence solution. So we're talking about the data analytics stuff earlier. Um, this is what we're actually going to be presenting now mm, to you as amazing. the agent. So you can sign up, you can see everything that's happening in your CRM or other solutions you connect to us, mm -hmm. whether it's transaction management, you know, QuickBooks, accounting, we're aggregating all the data into a visual tool to where mm -hmm. we're giving you basically feedback on performance of what's happening okay. in your business insight. And then over time, we're going to be giving you recommendations on okay. what you should be doing based on those numbers we were talking about mm -hmm. for the agent or for your business. Hey, this is what we recommend. You need to go train this person. Their, their ratio is low. Your lead source ROI is off mm -hmm. on this particular lead source. Stop spending, spending money in there, spending money over here. All that stuff you're going to see is a brand new tool that we're, we're bringing to the industry. We're super excited. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so um, look for that right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, amazing. Thank you so much, Scott. It was a, actually a great conversation. I was hoping actually we'll have this conversation. And yeah. to be honest, I'm uh, I'm looking forward, um, I don't know, down the road, maybe again, we'll have another session. Maybe we will, you will present uh, the, the new product you're launching in in uh because this is going to be available uh very soon so in two weeks you have the new uh event you said or yeah uh, we're or launching the, the product at the end of april so depending on when april. this comes out okay. yeah. yeah perfect amazing thank yeah. you thank you, thank so, you much. so much for ha having me i really appreciate okay. amazing. it amazing yeah i just want to help real estate teams and agents so i know feel I know. free to you know reach out to me and i'm happy to get on the call